Canada, near Peterborough, Ontario. Pierre and I are in quarantine after having crossed the Canadian border, with mandatory 14-day quarantine still in place. We're staying in a cabin on the Otonabee River, which is part of the Trent Severn Canal system that connects Lake Ontario to Georgian Bay of Lake Huron. This is part of the Great Lakes system of North America, and Pierre and I grew up sailing on the St. Lawrence River, also part of this Great Lakes waterway system. This is the first of a series of three videos on marine electrical systems and the electrical systems on Biotrek. This video is going to be all about shore power and preventing leakage of electricity in the water that can lead to electric shock drowning. Good morning and welcome to Biotrek Sailing. Today we're going to talk about an important issue which is onboard electricity. So imagine this. It's a really hot day. You jump in the water while your partner is making lunch in the galley and all of a sudden your muscles are paralyzed. You can't move and you're drowning. What's happening? Well, that's called electric shock drowning. And it happens more often than people think. And this is a topic that I'm quite aware of as being a freshwater sailor. So both Pierre and I started sailing in freshwater. In freshwater, it's much more of an issue because freshwater doesn't conduct electricity. And so if there's any liquid leakage of electricity from the boat, it's gonna go into a nearby swimmer's body. Salt water, it takes a little bit more current for that to happen, but it's still an issue. This diagram shows how electric shock drowning might occur. The shore power pedestal carries the hot, neutral, and ground to the boat. Without an isolation transformer, the boat is not one, protected from a bad line on the dock, or two, any fault on the boat. If the boat on the diagram had an isolation transformer, it would generate new power from the dock, isolated from the shore feed. Without an isolation transformer, the current leaks into the water. In fresh water, this electricity paralyzes muscles, and it paralyzes them at a current much lower than would take for cardiac arrest. This causes the swimmer to drown. In salt water, touching metal attached to the boat, such as a swim ladder or propeller, can have the same effect. So divers in a marina should always disconnect shore power from the boat before diving around boats in a marina. So on Biotrack, our electrical systems are designed to make sure that no electricity ever goes into the water. So now you understand why when preparing a boat for blue water cruising to different countries, it's super important to think about shore power. One of the biggest issues with uh, electrical systems is their extreme variances all over the world. As far as voltage, as far as frequencies, as far as uh, the way the docks are built, uh, some places are very high level of skills, uh, but some other areas, the skill level is very low. Some of the docks are new with a new standard. Some of the docks are, are old and with wires reversed. I've seen just about everything uh, in, our, in our travel around the world. Typically when I go to a new marine, the first thing I do is get my voltmeter and go to the dock and find out what what are what are we getting here. Yes, that's <laughs> so, absolutely true. The voltmeter is always at the nav station at the ready. <laughs> that's it. So basically all of this, uh, trying to simplify the system and make it as robust as possible, the idea here is to design a system, especially with the newer technologies, uh, where the boat systems are completely insulated from shore. If we do plug in shore or generator or solar panels, it doesn't matter where the power is coming from or where water generator is, it doesn't matter. Uh, the idea is that all of the boat's power is provided through the batteries and the local, local storage, energy storage, or uh, through uh, inverters, you know, so uh, powered by the battery again. So that means so, uh, if, if we're at a dock, you always say you don't care what the power is, and that's because you can either trickle it into the batteries or you can just uh, take what, uh, you know, what, what a modern dock can give you. Well, the base it. principle is I always assume dock power is awful uh, to start with. I always assume that the uh, ground neutral power <laughs> leads were all reversed and nothing is plugged properly. I assume that uh, there's a large voltage between the ground and the neutral at the place we're locking in and uh, that, it, that it's leaking. So that's my start assumption. So every time I go into a new dock, uh, I just use a dock to charge the batteries and that is all done through an insulation transformer so that I generate my own ground on the boat 
and uh, and uh, if you look at the diagram that Lisa is, is showing you now, uh, at the top left you see there are two ways to put power into the into the boat. It is one through the generator which we have on the boat, or through shore power. And uh, as I said, we never trust shore power. So the first thing we do uh, in there that we insist in all of our boats is the first thing that comes from the shore power is insulation transformer. Uh, and then this one will feed the rest of the boat and also uh, provide a new ground for the boat, which is part of these standards with a good insulation transformer, is that the shore power grounding is never carried onto the boat because of uh, for too many issues, as I mentioned. Same goes for the neutral and the L1. We don't want to deal with this. So the insulation transformer allows us the flexibility of regenerating the power completely since everything is insulated. And if we re regenerate everything at the boat level, it's like having our own shore transformer on the boat, if you want. So by linking the neutral and the ground at the shore insulation transformer, it allows us to start with a clean bill of health for the boat, electric-wise. Uh, but can you still have electrical leakage into the water? You know, as I described at the beginning of the video, is the insulation transformer sufficient? Are there other, um, other things that you need to do to ensure there's no electrical leakage into the water? No, no, no. Assuming that the wiring of the boat is well done and it follows the standard and assuming that the boat is equipped with proper GFIs, uh, ground fault interrupt uh, at the source and at the uh, at the distribution level, then this will detect everything if there's an issue and uh, it won't uh, it will just not allow be allowed to operate on the boat. Uh, I see some people, you know, part of the complaints about the insertion transformer is the cost, which is the biggest one for the manufacturers. Uh, the second one is the weight. Although now with the new uh, high frequency transformers, uh, these are getting a lot, lot lighter, a lot more efficient, and uh, you don't have to have the old, extremely heavy short base insulation transformers that uh, some people have put in their boats before, and uh, so that allows you that flexibility. I see some people which will say, "Well, you know, uh, uh, galvanic insulators are sufficient," and uh, to this, I, I have to be very very specific is uh, insulated is galvanic insulation that some people see are sufficient to provide some level of insulation is absolutely unacceptable for several reasons which i'm not going to go into details just to say that uh having a shore power shore transformer powered by the grid which could be a thousand feet away from the where the boat is and several of the boats attached to the same wires will get voltage drift just because of the resistance of each boat on the same wires and after a thousand feet you can be sure that the voltage is a lot lower from the transformer and on shore and because of that automatically there's not just that the, the voltage line drops down but neutral goes up so now you end up having a big discrepancy between the ground and and the neutral, and you can assume that if not the, the dock itself, there will be boats on the dock which are not wired properly either. So uh, that explains in part why you know you cannot never never rely on the shore power. But how, how would a boat that's not properly wired affect our boat if we didn't have the insulation transformer? Okay, a very good example is you get the European boat on the uh, an, an, an American uh, system, and on some European, some manufacturers will insist because of some of their standard countrywide standard will insist in generating a new ground at the boat. So they will link the ground and the neutral at the boat level, for example, assuming that the wiring is well done, you know. And if they do that, then automatically at as the dock goes down, as I mentioned, and you get the voltage gap changing, uh, you could end up having three, four, five volts difference between the neutral and the ground, simply uh, by the drifting effect. And uh, if you do that, and somebody comes in with a boat and just plugs it into into the sharp uh, sharp uh, plug. Uh, automatically, you're going to create a leakage in the water by three or four volts. And uh, that is very bad for the uh, the uh, zinc on the boat, all the metal parts of the boat itself. So if a European boat comes and plugs into the, in Canada and the US and sees a, a nice 240 volt plug, there are 230, here we're 240, it's, they, they just automatically assume it is going to work. 
So they take a, one, an American plug and they just wired the three wires into it, which is a ground neutral L1 and L2. And now they've got 230 volts, 240 volts on their boat and they're happy. And the problem is the European boat is a neutral end load and North America, the two 120 leg split phases, both loads. So now you end up having 120 volts potentially going into the water if the boat is badly done. So that will kill somebody. In if salt somebody, water, not just fresh water. Yeah, if you had to happen to touch metal in salt water, yes, or in fresh water, just swimming around the boat will kill you. But all this to say that <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to rely on shore power first. And second, you don't want to rely on galvanic insulator because just a three volts or four volt ship, which is very, very easy to, to get uh, on the long dock, uh, will, will negate the effect of the galvanic insulation because galvanic insulation is two diodes in series, you know, and it will just protect you for 1.2, 1.5 volt difference at the most. So three, four, five volts, which we see very often difference, uh, will, will negate the effect of the uh, galvanic insulation. So in my book, galvanic insulation is just good to be put in the garbage. Never, never use on the boat, never. Uh, if you say your loads are very high on the boat and you need a very large insulation transformer, my answer to this is you shouldn't be running the loads on the shore power anyway. You should be running the loads on your local storage with your local inverters. So. If you look at the diagram again, with that in mind, if you look again at the diagram there, the shore on the top left, you see the shore power plug. So here I say this shore power plug will take anything from 90 volt to 250 volt AC. Depending on the type of charger, you can even feed DC in there if you want. Extremely flexible. It is agonistic as to the frequency also because we're only using it to charge in most modes, uh, 50 or 60 hertz. We don't use the neutral in the in, in because since we go from 90 volts to 250 volts, we have to be independent of the voltage completely. So we don't use a neutral, we just use L1 and L2. If you plug in 120, then you've got neutral in L1. If you plug in 2 or 240 plug in the US, you've got L1 and L2. And uh, and if you are in Europe, you're using neutral and, and L1, which is at 230. So the point is that the only wires that you need for safety reason, regulation purpose, uh, reason, is the ground that you carry on for safety. And then you've got your two leads, uh, which is I guess in a 120 volt system or in Europe it's the neutral in the load and if you're using a 240 to 50 in the US then it's a 1L2 that you carry on plus the ground nothing else you don't bring, need to bring the neutral just like the electric car industry it's exactly the same way they, they operate when they're charging your cars it's, it's, a, it's voltage agonistic so what about you talked about European boats coming to America and plugging into the US system what about American boats going to Europe are there problems there Less so because by default the American system L1 and L2 are both floating. I mean they're not referenced to neutral or ground. So uh, if you were to touch contact and bring those two wires together, you get a big spark. <laughs> It'll build a breaker because they're just you know they're not the neutral in the U.S. is supposed to be equivalent to ground and not in and, you know in, in in Europe. Yes, so, to a certain point, yes, but they don't have the second leg because they don't have split phase in Europe. Here they do. And uh, in certain part of the world, you get the split phase with 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So again, things get really messy. So that's why it's so important to have, you know, completely independence from the shore. And do, and do European docks have drift from the transformer down to the end of the dock? Same thing, okay. same issues. Exactly. Uh, this is a typical uh, shore power connection for boats uh, in the US. This one has two sockets. This one here is, is a typical 230, 240 volts, uh, 60 hertz, with two hot lead, the one with the knock there, this one and this one, and this is the neutral, and this is the ground, of course. And these are the 50 amp breakers that will power this plug. This plug, on the other hand, only has one with a hook, which means it's 120. It only has one of the two legs there. And this is neutral, and this is the ground. The ground is always the biggest <laughs> of them all, for obvious reasons. And uh, here, that's the breaker for it, because that's one is single phase. This one is two phases, uh, L, the uh, two opposite phases. And uh, over here, this is what they call a, a more, or even more powerful plug, where it's uh, rated at 100 amps, but it's uh, 240 on each of the legs, three phase, 340. So that allows, uh, even higher voltage when you combine different legs. There's a big transformer which is over there. 
and they have the high voltage coming in from from the grid and from the high voltage to the grid on the one side of the transformer and the other side of the transformer uh, is set down to 240 or 120 and it typically has a tap in the middle and if it's three phase combined it's still tap in the middle and that tap in the middle at the transformer is also tied up with a rod to the ground so that is will be the ground reference for the whole marina at that location all right sir but the uh, city transformer is the grid box over there and that's where the ground reference is taken for the ground and where the neutral and the ground are tapped together then it goes from there over to the white boxes where they have the step down transformers feeding ducts here so you can see very easily where the balance could come off and the neutral could start to drift up as you're getting further further down the dock which you know creates a lot of issues but what do you mean by drift i mean that uh <coughs> normally the power is either fed 220 240 power is fed by l1 and l2 which are two line which as you start to add loads on it the top voltage will come down the bottom voltage will, will go up so when you check with a voltmeter if you're further away from the source you see the voltage is dropping it's not just the top voltage is dropping the bottom is going up too if you have a 120 volt system or the u the, Amer the european system which is zero and 230 the same thing happens is the neutral leg goes up and the top leg goes down so that they both, when you see a 5 volt, 10 volt difference from the standard grid voltage, that's how much is lost in the cables between you and the, uh, the you know, <coughs> feed transformers. This is the plug and the wire that we're using for our boat here. As you see, this is the ground where it gets its ground information. That's L1 and L2, which are both to a 120, 120, which gives us the 240 volts. And that's the neutral. So what we do in, in our boat, for example, we only care about power coming into the boat. We don't care about the neutral because we don't use 120. And uh, the ground is only a reference up to the boat. After that, we regenerate our own ground. So in this case, we are only using uh, three of the four wires in here, which is L1, L2 and the ground for safety reasons. Okay, here you'll notice that the cables are actually quite small because this is a typical 120 you know, uh, <coughs> volt 30 amp cable which is a lot smaller than the 50 amp cable that you see in most American marinas. And this is uh, an extension that I have which is also rated at 32 volts, uh, uh, 32 amps, sorry. This one is a little larger because it has four conductors, only using three as we discussed. And here it's only three conductors which is the typical, you know. Uh, and is our boat never uses high power because even though our, our boat is able to pull up to 15 kilowatts when using ACs and cooking and our refrigeration and microwave and a coffee maker and on and on and on and on, uh, all of that power is, is provided by the inverters inside the boat, not by shore power. So that allows us to have very small, we could even use a 120 volt plug if we wanted to at 15 amps, it'd be sufficient for our needs because we typically burn between 10 and 15 kilowatt hour per day of, of and that's a very good average for all boats uh, and requirements whether you're sailing or whether you're an anchor and uh, that if you take even take a 120 volt plug at 15 amps that will still give you uh, you know two kilowatts per hour over 24 hours it's over 25 kilowatt of like a kilowatt hour of energy that you can get out of a single 120 volt plug so uh, so it gives a lot of flexibility. And our vessel has been configured to use either 120 volts or 240 volts, we don't care, because it's the same wiring, same everything else. And it's just the transformers inside which take care of the conversion, since we only charge a battery with a dock, and then the AC is provided by the inverter. Is that it? Yep. Thank you for watching this episode, which is taken from Peterborough, Ontario on the beautiful Ontonomy River. A real boater's paradise in the summer. At this time of year, at late November, it's pretty quiet here. Please ring that notification bell and subscribe. And leave us some comments about what you thought about this episode and about your electrical systems on your boats.